hope you also filled out the um, forms, the registration forms. Our next speaker will be Dr. Ah Ahan Kay. Ahan Kai. Did I get that correct? Thank you. Okay. Dr. Ahan Kai went to me completed medical school and her residency at Johns Hopkins University in Maryland. Um, she has done lots in the way of um, creating awareness on HIV AIDS. Um, she actually launched an HIV AIDS and reproductive health education program in rural Ghana and she has also done work on HIV in communities such as Kampala, Uganda, Cape Town, South Africa, and Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, thank you very much and Ms. Dr. Ahanghai, we have great <laughs>
the numbers of people living with HIV and AIDS are growing in um, all of these different racial and ethnic groups. Among uh, blacks in the United States, this group is growing at an even larger rate. So there are many different prevention tools kind of in the armamentarium to address the HIV epidemic. Um, and I'll highlight some of them specifically. Um, there's education, uh, counseling, or behavior change. And I know most of you, all of us know how difficult it is to change even our own behaviors um, from very little things like what we eat or cigarettes or, or whatever. And that's such a challenging piece of this puzzle, but one um, in which a lot of effort has been um, invested in. Uh, another prevention tool is the treatment of sexually transmitted infections. And we know that um, particularly with um, genital ulcer diseases like herpes, uh, like syphilis, um, when you have these sexually transmitted infections, you're at a higher risk for um, getting infected with HIV and um, you are at increased risk, uh, risk for transmitting it to other people if you're HIV infected. So, um, kind of having a, a, a program that really addresses aggressively treatment of sexually transmitted infections um, is a helpful piece of the prevention program. Um, condom use, we all know about condom use for the, for the prevention of other uh, sexually transmitted infections in addition to HIV, um, and which is still part of the armamentarium. Um, treatment has historically been looked at as a prevention tool, but more, when, and there actually used to be a lot of debate in the HIV world about where, the, where efforts should be focused. Should we be focusing our money when there's limited money, which there always is, on prevention or on treatment or how do we divide this up? And more and more people now are realizing that effective treatment actually is a prevention tool, and I'll talk to you a bit more about that. Um, my, microbicides are an area of active research. There aren't really any um, currently available for use, but there are many being studied currently. Um, and then an HIV vaccine is something that we're all hoping for, and active research being done there. But again, that's not something that's available now. Um, I just wanted to highlight a bit about gender um, inequities in HIV, um, because some of the prevention tools that were being pushed towards um, developing uh, prevent preventive uh, tools that can be kind of driven uh, by female use, and this is why. Um, half of all HIV-infected patients worldwide are female, um, but in Sub-Saharan Africa, this is greater than 60% of all HIV-infected patients are female. Uh, women account for two-thirds of the caregivers for people living with HIV and AIDS. And then, you know, for, for reasons that many of us are aware of, um, cultural, religious, political, economic, um, women um, are really bearing a significant uh, proportion of the burden um, and I just put one example here about women who are living by HIV often become destitute just from lack of property and inheritance rights. And this is just the tip of the iceberg on this you know, much larger issue. Um, and I did some work in South Africa a few years ago, and I just wanted to highlight this as a very extreme example of kind of the gender inequities and um, abuses. Um, that I witnessed while I was there. And on the right are just some images. Um, you know, I've actually felt a bit bombarded by images addressing issues of violence, um, sexual assault, and rape um, in, in Cape Town when I was there. And I was bombarded with it because it was more of a It was really a significant issue at that time. It's still currently. And you can see here, uh, one of them, on the far right is on the billboard for a high school, um, turning rape victims into survivors. And then this poster um, at the bottom there that says, he beat her 132 times, she got, only got flowers once. 